The, the main thing I want to see in this draft actually is do secret ban the Tusk. Because I know people have started banning the Earth Spirits. Jerex has actually play, he's played 27 games in this patch and 25 of them have been either Tusk or Earth Spirits. So I just feel like there's a point at which you got to say like, make the guy play something else. I, people like yeah. to ban Razor and all sorts of other heroes against Liquid too, but honestly like, if, if a player has played the same two heroes that many times, like... I... I, that, that to me was one of the things, like, looking at... I, I watched in Castle at the European Games during the major qualifiers, and people... It was talk, his Earth Spirit was so talked about, like, he was like I, he was 6-0, I think, on the Earth Spirit. The hero itself was 7-0 in Europe, and everyone was like, oh, Jack's Earth Spirit, like, you've just got to ban it. But, like you say, he'd do just as well in Tusk. So I feel like banning the Earth Spirit and giving him Tusk, a lot of the time it's like, well, what have you really accomplished? You may as well have just left both in the pool and get an extra ban out of it. Yeah, so. it's, it's like people have decided that Earth Spirit is like less of a known quantity. I guess they're more used to the task and uh, less the first pick task. It's 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 completely standard for Liquid at this point. They're first picking task or Earth Spirit unless you ban both yeah. every game. So, I mean, for Seeker, I guess they decide, I mean, that's basically them saying we'd rather verse Tusk than Earth Spirit, since you got to know that they're going to pick that for Jerex when it's still left in the pool, so... Uh, we'll see what the response is going to be from Team Secret. This puppy drafting against Kuro. That's going to be something, a story in itself here in some ways. These two know each other very well, have played side by side for a long time and against each other for long periods of time as well. But yeah. one of the uh, the cooler bromances, I would say, in the Dota scene. These two, these two guys, still, still good friends, I want to say. Definitely. And um, both of these teams, I think it's their second game of the tournament. They both won the first game, but... Neither one of their, their victories was like completely convincing, like definitely in control all the time. Team Secret start with the Vengeful Spirit, which by the way, I mean, if you look at Western like Emoth teams, you usually talk about Secret and EG, and every game I've seen Secret and every game I've seen EG in this tournament, they first pick Vengeful Spirit. Yeah, it's so. been first banned a few games as well from, from what I've been seeing, so it seems to be one of those picks which is just going to be hotly contested in this tournament for now, until teams start using it and then maybe it loses a few games here or there. And it's it's really interesting that some teams use it as support, some teams use it as carry, and some teams use it as both. It's, yep. it's kind of everywhere. Both these teams currently 1 and 0. Did you you did you catch the Liquid previous game that they, they just won now? It was being cast in the second stream. LD and Lumi mentioned a little bit about it. Kuro played Chen. Yeah. Um, he got like a really early kill like on Limp and stuff. But... Solo kill with the creep, yeah. yeah. I, I heard, I mean, we were watching a bit like in between panel bits. We were like checking on the laptop okay. and that. And it looked like the kill score was roughly even all the way to the end. But Liquid were mostly ahead. Mm. And they had a Chen. They had kind of pushing elements and eventually won. As for Secret, their first win, far from convincing, but it was against Virtus Pro. It was the, the big comeback with Naga Siren. This time around, Darkseer going to be the opening partner for the Vengeful Spirit, and we'll see what Liquid get retaliation for this one. I feel almost in some ways this is always like a, a block pick against Mind Control as well. Definitely. I think it's Mind Control's best hero. I think that Liquid have shown that they like to do Darkseer with Tusk as an aggressive dual lane, so both. It's, I mean, it's also just a prioritized off lane in, in the current meta has been for quite some time, especially since the patch came out, but even before this patch. So, get the docks here early on, and... I... Part of me also thinks that maybe it, like, in, in, in some kind of, like, faraway land sets up for that Ember Spirit pick, because I've been wondering if Secret are still going to run Ember Spirits in, in this new patch. There, there are other teams playing it. The first two games I watched today were both won by Ember Spirits. Uh, people said when the patch came out, the hero's nerfed. I don't, I don't know what your feeling is. I, I feel like the nerf is, is really not that big. The hero's still good, and... Especially because it can like fight the early push and then still scale and win the late game. Yeah, I definitely think the the hero works just fine. Like I don't think it's fallen off at all with the with the changes. So it's not not great in lane against DP, but the secret don't really run if uh, they pick it a bit safe lane. Probably, yeah, so. yeah. And it just I mean envy perhaps perhaps the best Ember Spirit player out there. Like I think he is. I, yeah. I, I don't think anyone matches up to him. I mean, there's a pl few players who may be close. I'm yeah. Speaking of one, maybe himself, but yeah. uh, it, I, the way he just min-maxes with that hero, gets every little bit of extra farm on the map, pushes the hero to the limits, is really unmatched right now. That's why I want to see them pick it, because it, it, like, Envy is like one of the best carry players in the world. He he is the best um, Ember Spirit in the world, I think. And if we think the hero is still good, then so the, the last patch, that was kind of the approach. It was like every game, if we can get Ember, we just get it. And I, I guess they don't need to prioritize it now because other people aren't ready, but I, I would like to see it. Although, that all, we were talking earlier on the panel about this, I wouldn't mind seeing a, a Terrorblade either from, from Envy because you know, he used to be like a massive Terrorblade spammer, played it all the time. The hero got nerfed and he was like really depressed, we can't pick that hero anymore. But Terrorblade's coming back, especially in China. So these are 
probably two, the two heroes that I would really like to see in turn NB play. Bands come out, Bounty Hunter banned out against Pylite Die, Lycan getting banned out against Team Liquid, and it seems as much as Fata's Razor is a scary threat, he, they lean sometimes towards the Death Prophet more, and especially on that Radiant side. I think the Razor is something they feel just fits better with the, the Dire side, the jungle is a lot better to farm, and I mean, Matoma Man did his like clowny little impression of Fata where he's just like, he loves to go back to the jungle, like, look at me, I'm farming creeps, I'm suddenly like maxed out, like, he spends so much more time in the jungle than like any other Razor player out there, like, using just his ultimate and plasma field to farm as many camps as once yeah but also yeah i think death prophet is if, if i had to say this early on in the patch the most likely hero to be nerfed in the next patch it's like yeah there's a lot of really strong heroes but in terms of heroes which are strong in a way that you expect a change to be made i i look at dp i just think she's yeah her they just made her so much stronger like maybe the one thing that's weak about her now is her level one exorcism before you get to the level two ulti but her, yeah, I mean, her nuke store, what it was, she still got all the things the Witchcraft gave, essentially, and the Spirit Siphon is just, like, completely absurd. And it, she scales so well into the late game, it's the crazy thing, with largely because of the, the Siphon, so... Ban onto the Spectre comes next from Team Liquid, and see what the, the last ban's gonna be as Secret go into the second pick stage with their selection first, and... Very open draft, uh, the Venge, which can be run as a support as well as in that core, core role. Although I imagine with like the Dark Seer offlane, not really here who's going to scale as a carry, you're probably more likely looking at something like a, a Puppy or a Pylai Divenge. I wonder if uh, Liquid are setting up for Nature's Prophet for Mind Control. I know it's one of the heroes he likes to play, and Spectre and Bounty Hunter are both heroes that are quite good against the, the Nature's Prophet. Uh, maybe it's just in my head because I was just over there discussing the Alliance yeah. game, but I know it is, uh, I mean, Mind Control has been denied as his Dark Seer as well, so kind of adds up for me that they might go for it also obviously is just a good hero in the current meta fits with the kind of pushing plan people usually go for yeah mm -hmm. it's really and it's hard to know if that's gonna be the plan secret go for we've seen their their one game so far at this tournament on the new patch outside of wca what they play they went for the naga siren something more late game oriented against the death prophet they that didn't scare them off last time from going from the late game naga siren not to say they're gonna looking at it right away well they're, they're definitely not now because they pick up lone druid which is I believe going to be for uh, Envy in the safe lane. Yeah, it should be. It is a hero that he's played before in the past, and I, I think he'll be pretty good at it. Like, Lone Druid's a hero that I think benefits quite a lot from thinking very carefully about how to optimize your item board and item progression, and it's on Envy is kind of known for doing that very well. So I, th I think it's quite a good fit. You look back towards Liquid, they, they've got a support in a mid, so they, they could pick for essentially any role right now. No, oh, there's a great answer to the lone lone druid and dark and the dark yeah. It's... Like you've got disarm for the bear, you've got the purge against the dark seer. And the purge also important because that mid game bear with iron shell on it is just brutal. So you just throw a purge at, you take the iron shell off, you slow it down, and uh, then you can disarm it as well if you want to. So this this seems like a really good pick. And now you've got your support duo that makes your death profit invincible like your exorcism going off you can't in traditionally in the past the answer to a death prop exorcism is to have enough burst damage that if she's going for pushing your high gun you burst her down exorcism gone but with oracle and tusk in the picture that just doesn't really seem like a feasible answer for team secret at least not something they can rely on yeah i, th I think oracle is a great pick there counters the enemy heroes and as you say synergizes with liquid heroes but at the same time i so strange i i feel like i've seen oracles only lose today i i really? can't be sure okay. about that but I mean, I, 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 can't, I, I don't feel like it's, yeah. it's been the Oracle's fault, but it just keeps happening. I think I've seen three Oracles, and I, I think they've all lost. There was the game there was an Oracle pick, and it was like against Darkseer and Ember, and it still lost that game. Yeah, but it, yeah, it lost that one. Uh, that was which game was that? That was. Um, I think that was Navi vs Fnatic. Yeah, yeah, that was the game where it felt like it. it I mean, that that game I don't feel like was too much on the draft because they, yeah. they had the. Um, was it they like went full commitment onto the death prophet with Omni Knight here with Tusk as well as like Oracle, all these protective supports for it. And then it also lost. EG had Oracle against LGD, and I LGD. Catch that game. Yeah. Although the Oracle PBD made a lot of big plays with Oracle in that game. So secret pick up Marana. Is that support Marana? Is that? It's probably a support. Kind of needs to be. Doesn't looking, it? I mean, Puppy used to play this a bit. I want to say. Yes, yeah. If you yeah. go way back. I'm not sure if that means it's going to be Puppy here or Pylai die on the hero, since it's kind of that roaming support in some ways, which maybe suits Pylai die. But 
Pi also can play a very capable vengeful spirit. He's so. I, I, I see Pi on the vanish because Pi's gotta be the hero that's gonna feed and like <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Puppy's like I'm not tarnishing my KDA. Yeah. You you take that one Pi. So I would say Puppy Marana and unless they do something really funky and Misery plays Marana and Puppy's like Dark Seal or something, but because Misery actually has played offlane Marana before. Uh I think he played it once fairly recently. And then love many, many times back like, in the I think if you look at like top Marana plays, he's going to be one of the players who's played it more than anyone. Yeah, he was playing Marana in Dota 1. He was like yeah. one of the original Marana players. Yeah. So that's a, a direction that they could go. And it's it, something that actually happened in the... I didn't catch that much of it, but I watched some highlights and people were telling me Navi beats Alliance when S4 was Death Prophet mid and he kept getting ganked by Chen. And I feel like Marana could have a similar effect, like, if the Death Prophet's just, like, permanently being pressured, even if you're not hitting the arrows, like, just shut down the early game of the Death Prophet can be a big deal, so maybe that's what the Marana picks about. You mentioned Ember's still strong, it's gonna be Liquid who pick it up for themselves in the safe lane to go with the Oracle, Matumba Man, he's played a lot of games on, especially on the 6.85 patch, so... Yeah, we, we can't all be the best Ember Spirit in the world, but he's he's certainly one of them, you know, he's, he's up there, and he knows what to do with the hero. Fast is... ban onto Nyx. No mind control hero picked up just yet, and a hero that can lane very well against the Darks here and just match up well against him. Could ban the Gyrocopter. What? Where are they expecting Gyrocopter? I guess they're expecting Lone Druid mid for that. Like a Lone Druid mid, Darks here off lane, and then a oh, safe you know lane pick up last. We are actually does play Lone Druid. He, I, I, I thought something didn't add up. They both. It's only admitted we are both play Lone Druid and could definitely be mid. I think that we actually played quite a lot of Lone Druid and like is in Balkan Bears or. Long ago, before yep. he was in this team, that's a good read. I didn't think of that before. Yeah. But definitely, here Envy can play as well. So I don't feel like we quite quite know where it's going to go. But with that, well, we can expect him mid since uh, Sven has been picked up for Team Secret. Warcry to be able to fight a bit better into the Exorcism. Got some good burst damage from the God Strength, and it seems to be here that a lot of Death Prophet teams are actually banning out, like in later stage of the game, to avoid playing against. Yeah, you don't want to fight into the Warcry, but also I. I think this makes the Marana pick a lot better too, because Sven is such a good setup for, for Marana Arrow. So you don't have to just be taking pot shots, like hoping you hit. You can get almost full length arrows set up by Sven's done, and that's usually a kill early on. So suddenly there's a lot of pressure on this pick for, for mind control. They don't have the hero yet, and Tidans actually fits the bill because yep. he's going to have a way to deal with that arrow at least. He's going to be able to, like, uh, back and shell it off. And even against, like, the bear and the Sven, you can kind of shrug off a lot of their early game damage damage and has great sustain for this team. So I think this is a really good pick and something that's a bit like underpicked maybe in the current patch. I think every time I see a tide I'm just like, whoa, this hero is actually ridiculously strong right now and something that should maybe get played a bit more. Perhaps it's because it's like picked up so late that in games where it fits well that the hero does seem strong, but Do you think the dynamic I mean I feel like most of the games I've watched in this tournament and even in this patch, there's like the one team is more kind of pushing and the other team's more kind of late game. I, I don't, if we had to say that, we'd say Secret's more kind of pushing, but I'm I'm not sure if Liquid are clearly stronger than them in the late game. I think they are. Uh, I mean, I don't like how like the heroes like Mirana are going to scale into the late game, and you're looking at Ember just with high ground defense, great mobility, Death Prophet who does scale well into the late game. So I think if you go too much fire. And To the late game, the Sven gets kited. I think it's that mid game where he's got like his blink BKB data list. Like he hits that timing and he's he's pretty good for a while, but if it keeps like dragging 50, 60, 70 minutes, then he struggles. Yeah, so, so I would agree that uh, there's more pressure on Secret to do things early, but I don't think it's 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 not cut and dry like if they miss their window, they're just screwed or something. Early battle coming out between Mind Control and Pile I Die with the, the T's up top, and Mind Control will be denied getting his ward down. He TP'd up there without any items, so he was looking for the fast ward and does get prevented. It's super important. It's it's even more important than it was back when it was more popular to TP for that ward because offlaning has become a lot more difficult. And wow, oh, this is actually interesting. A uh, smoke from Secret. Yeah. They're uh, looking to raid the enemy jungle here and if we get down a early ward or some fir or first blood and Kuro. It's helped out by nice eye shots from Jerex, possibly saving his life there. Although he does have 305 movement speed, so I don't think Sven would have been able to catch up to him for the Stormbolt. Yeah, better safe than sorry. And even though it doesn't matter, it's just 
there we go. We we see straight away Jerax's ice shards. I mean, this this guy, you gave him his task. He's gonna have like I don't think we should be surprised this game when he has a good ice shards. We should be surprised when he has a bad one. Yeah, <laughs> that's generally the case with this guy. Well, secret gonna secure top ring. They they went for the other rotation. They don't get any wards down, and immediately Liquid Liquid put down the ward themselves to make sure they can secure that level one bounty rune or death profit, which Fata will will grab. You see, Misery's just starting in the jungle. I think, or he's looks like maybe he's considering going to the lane because when you're against Oracle, often Dox is just like, I, I, I the game I watched earlier where LGD were against EG, that was actually the situation, and RTK just went straight to the jungle. He yep. made some stacks, started farming. I think something that Jerks does really well, he sometimes recognizes situations where if he starts in the safe lane and kind of tri lanes the Tusk to find the early kill, he will do so, and that's I guess something Misery's respecting. That Tusk is down there, level one without surge, you're done for. Yeah, exactly. It's I mean. Even if you have Surge, Oracle can, can, can control you, so it's just that hero that sets up the actual kill. Happy. Some neutraling, here we go. This is a nice little thing Mirana can do now. It just means you can be off the map, creating that scare of an arrow coming into one of the lanes, while also getting a farm, a bit of farm, a bit of levels here. So, you can even do this once again when this camp respawns if he really wants to be a bit more greedy, so... Yeah, it's, I mean, this is not the like the thing you see in pubs with people like jungle, ancients, Marana. It's like you're running around arrowing lanes, and in between you're just getting some value. Yep. That's really the purpose. And he's gonna take one more big creep here as a uh, mid lane. Oh, oh we are taking quite a bit of damage from the soul siphon. Gets lost back a bit more, and there we go. Puppy, he hits level two. Like being level two, one minute in, now he can actually go to this off lane and use the leap as an escape spell since Darkseer is not sitting in this lane. So this just gives him that little bit of extra safe and secure experience. So in some ways, this is kind of at least for now, like an offlane core Moran, although I don't imagine it will stay that way. Ah, oh, he hit the small creep. Uh, it's alright, he's got his clarity still going, he's getting max value out of that. Yeah, if you, if you think about like the psychology of a roaming Marana, it makes so much sense to buff it the way that they did. Because before, if Marana's off the map, you know she's trying to arrow you, and now like she might just be arrowing a creep. It's So it, it, it makes the gank potential a lot higher, the enemy team doesn't know. I mean, in this case, they're going to know because the Marana's actually taking the offlane now. Yeah, it looks like Kuro actually managed to leech that. XP from the Dark Troll as well, meaning Puppy didn't quite get as much out of, out of it as he would have liked. Two minute rune coming up and Hero and Puppy, can't we just be friends again? Not happening. They bump the rune and we're going to see who takes it. Kuroki was right, he gets the rune. Puppy run, runs right into the Roshan pit and will make his way back the lane. Mid lane. So I, was this oh, Lundra? It's actually been gone on, and there's a DD oh, on the house. Yeah, the Soul Siphon will slow him down, and Weeha should be done for one more right click. Yep, Death Prophet actually not needing the right click, getting it with the Soul Siphon. And that's Spirit Siphon. I mean, again, I want to say that's Jerax because that's something out of nothing. Like I, I did not see that coming. Like we are was standing far back with his hero. He had a Spirit Bear farming. And he so, knows, like, typically he gets gone on there, he's gonna be fine, but it's just the fact that that DD rune just gives him that little bit of extra, like, 100 damage from the two right clicks, and suddenly he's found a kill. And I think this is part of why they actually picked the Lone Road. They picked it right at the start of the second phase. It was like, it's meant to be a hero that doesn't do that badly against the Death Prophet, because your hero can stand back, your bear can be up close, but if he's gonna get early deaths, then that's a pretty big problem. I think it's something you can't expect him to be able to survive the mid lane against a roaming tusk. Uh, I think that's... Perhaps something secret we're maybe trying to like adjust and play around, but so far Puppy, very kind of passive with his play on the Marana, not to say he's at fault here, but more just kind of commenting that he's not looking to apply pressure and help out that mid lane with the way he's been playing. Yeah, it's, I mean, I, I, yeah, that's, if the mid lane's fine, then it makes sense that he's just getting that free value, but as soon as the mid lane starts struggling, then it feels like, oh, well, he could have been doing more, and advantage Jerax at this point, and honestly, I don't think anyone's roaming anything is as good as his roaming Tusk is, so... Is an Iron Talon coming out? Yeah, you betcha. Iron Talon, Tidehunter, he wants to farm up some jungle. Puppy came in with a sentry, which could have blocked the camp and also allowed him to deward this Observer Ward. He's gonna arrow and steal some neutrals here, but... Tide, he's back. He can stack this. He can start farming it with the Iron Talon, so... I think he... I'm not sure if he tried to tanker that or that was a misclick there on his part, but... This is another good thing about the roaming Marana, actually, because offlaners are doing this more and more. Like, it's difficult to stay in the offlane, they go to that camp, and the Marana can actually just very easily come into fear, steal your creeps, steal your XP, block your camp. Soul Siphon, pretty useful against the Spirit Bear as well, it turns out. Misery's jungle time has not exactly been that fruitful here. He's only level three and a half now. 
will be about to hit level 4 off this camp and may look to start applying pressure on some of these lanes. He is grouping up both supports also here in the mid lane. This is a, a looking like a clear smoke coming out from the three secret heroes. We'll have to see where they look to head. Possibly the Ember Spirit pre-level 6 could be a prime target for them. Yeah, I'm I'm concerned moving forward. I, I think it's important that Secret make successful plays like this because there's going to be a point where Eternal Envy wants to farm the jungle. You see he's like starting to level Cleave very early on. And then Darkseid doesn't have that space. And Lone Druid, if he's behind, doesn't necessarily have that space. So they need to make some actual plays. And they go for the Ember Spirit right before he gets 6. Yep. It's off the flame guy, gets a bit of extra survivability because that Kuro goes in with a purge, but Tumberman's still fairly tanky, searing chains and should be out of here, puppy. I'm able to lock him in place long enough with the sacred arrow and Ember will be back to safety here and also getting closer and closer to the level 6. So, so important for him. It's very difficult for them to kill him once he's level 6. I mean, if they can stand this, there's, there's always ways to kill him, but let's say Oracle's standing behind Ember Spirits. It's near impossible for Ember Spirit well, to die then. I was keeping an eye on Oracle before that gank because Kuro was like one creep XP from hitting level 4, which would have been the first point in Fate's Edict, which would have given Ember Spirit even more kind of invulnerability to that gank. You pop it on him if he's trying to run away and you just block a lot of that magic damage coming out from Iron Shell and possibly even a magic missile if you're there in time. So even without that Fate's Edict, they didn't have any problem getting away. Yeah, so I mean, for me then the comparison becomes it's not. You know, at, at, at this point, killing Ember Spirit early on is going to be very difficult. He's going to get free farm. Sven is also getting free farm. I think Sven's free farm is worth a lot more, especially if he's doing this like early farming ball, taking the cleave, buying the Quelling Blade. He's probably going to clear through the jungle. Sven can actually get one item ahead of Ember Spirit. He, do you, it's annoying if we just use God's Strength just to push the wave. Dang. He's got, yeah, I guess he wants to push the wave and then farm the neutral camp here. Farm it twice, or well, I guess maybe the God Strength will wear off before the second time, but. Efficiency plays, I guess you could say. He's got no one in his lane, no opportunity to use it, so he says, like, yeah, let's let's push the wave and farm some neutrals. I wonder if he'll go for the... What I've seen before is when Sven's go for this cleave board, sometimes this, the Treads Mask of Madness blink, and you actually farm him almost anti-mage rates in the jungle, you just... It's, it sounds counterintuitive to blink with just one point in the stun, but like you say, you just... You blink around from camp to camp and... Helm of the Dominator always kind of the other like obvious item to get when you've got the cleave build because you want to be able to stack neutral camp, stack ancients, although ancient stacks so far have just been manually done by Team Secret. Yeah, Helm of Dom is actually by far the more mainstream item on Sven these days. But for the super farm build, I, I think Mask Manus is a bit better. But... Envy, they're going on him, they're TPing up the Death Prophet and they want this kill. Oops. So this is going to be a tough escape from TP's coming in from Team Secret. Arrow going to go flying through, they dodged it with the snowball, not sure that was the plan but it worked out just fine. I don't even think they had vision of it coming in, and Liquid get a key kill on the Sven, and in a position where they could apply some pressure up top with Exorcism available, the double damage Death Prophet, the one rotating in and causing that to happen. And Jerex immediately says, okay, Death Prophet TP'd up top, let's TP myself mid to make sure Lone Druid doesn't get any damage on this tower. Envy bought a Helm of Iron Wolf as he was dying, so it will be the Helm of Zon build for him this game, which is, I think, the mostly standard Sven build these days. Uh, one kill onto the Sven and Ember Spirit meanwhile going untouched at bottom has maxed out the Flame Guard now. Hero, you've always got to be worried about rotating to these other lanes now as well. It's not just, and that's the thing, like Liquid, you try and go somewhere on the map, you've got a Death Prophet, you've got an Ember Spirit, two heroes who can very easily rotate and make those kind of counter gank plays. And look at Envy, ulting into the jungle again, just like. On the Sven? Oh yeah. wow, yeah. I mean, it's, it, to be honest, it just makes perfect sense. Like, now that I see it, I'm like, why does. Why do Sven's not all just do this? Spam it's the, it's the same thing when it was like Arteezy and Envy used to, like when we see Fatu now, where you spam the Razor ultimate in the yeah. jungle. And it's like, of course, like this is an ultimate that increases your farm rate. You're also not, you're using it maybe like once in the first 15 to 20 minutes of the game for a fight typically. So why not just spam it and, and power jungle? Yeah, makes good sense. So Envy, as we know, not going to make any like... He's gonna make the efficient plays yeah. in terms of getting his farm up. It's very different to like, you look, compared to like, a player who's played a lot of spend lately, Havos, he would not do this at all. He'd be saving it, looking for towers and kills off of it. Never be thinking about like, what's gonna get me the most efficient, like, jungle farming patterns and like, the, the best possible GPM, for example. Well, Jerex is gonna go wandering through the enemy jungle, wants to find out what's going on there. Yeah. They have a ward down here already, so they, they, they can spot out the Sven when he's kind of making those jungle plays at least, and get an idea of like, okay, God Strings is on cooldown, let's try and get maybe more aggressive. Do you think, do you think Puppy's impact has been good enough 
this. I mean, he, he's, he's interfered a lot, but... He's interfered, but I feel it hasn't really been that much of an impact, all in all. I have not so far been sold on the Moran and the way it's been played. He hasn't, he didn't actually throw any arrows mid at the Death Prophet, and that was yeah. kind of key thing you mentioned, like a Death Prophet, you can put some pressure on, this hero will not catch up very well at all. Yeah, I honestly feel like it was maybe part of the plan, and then they were like, Darkseer can't actually be bought, he needs to leave. Hey, wait, Marana can be bought, and then everything just kind of yeah. fell into place, but... And the other thing was, Tusk kind of camped mid too, so you hit an arrow, you could just snowball and keep the hero alive oh. during that period of time. Well, that's <laughs> the end of that one. Speaking of Puppy's early game impact, he's gonna give yeah. my Timberman a little bit of farm. Not too big a deal, that, that kill by itself, but... It's uh, mid lane where Fata's now getting a bit more aggressive. Doesn't have to worry about an arrow for the time being, and... As far as TP rotations go, Sven could TP in, but you don't have like a guarantee of a stun, stun off of this, although he's actually just showing up to the mid lane and... Looking to keep this one pushed out with Exorcism soon to be wearing off. I wonder if there's going to be a... The pilot are maxing a Wave of Terror first, they've got Blunder, they've got the Sven. So I feel like it's a matter of time before... I think they're pinging to smoke, to rush. The classic, yeah. yeah. This is a, such a classic secret or envy play, I guess. He used it with the old Cloud9 and... Something him and Pi know all too well. They look to farm up this this stack here first, but right now we have a Radiant Observer would plant it down here, giving vision of this stack, so something that Team Liquid to could that, try and contest. They saw the smoke. I think they saw the smoke. I think Kuro just pinged that he saw like oh. part of the smoke animation. Derek's is still standing very close by. Mm, here comes Envy, looking to go in, Matumba Man. Oh, he dodges the stun. Snowball forward, can they still get the kill? The eye shot comes out as well. Matumba Man going aggressive, gets the two chains, but it's going to leave Tusk to die. They did not have the numbers they'd like, and Sven popping the ultimate. Not a hero that Ember particularly wants to fight with his low armor right now. You know what, it's still better for Liquid than if Rush had gone down for Tusk to die. Yeah, but it's I'm, the Ancients farm as well, and Envy will farm this and then immediately can get back to stacking it some more. I say you can oh. farm it, he's been caught out, and Flame Guard will finish off the kill, the vision. To Matumba Man, and there's nothing to get rid of this Flame Guard right now. They need some magic damage coming in. He's just gonna fight the bear. There comes the Slider Fist. Matumba Man gets a Searing Chains up on two. He's almost killed off the bear. He will do so, and they take out Lone Druid. He's looking for more. He wants Misery. Oracle will get a double kill. The spam on the Purifying Flame, just doing serious work as Secret Loose. Four heroes here, and that one Observer Ward scouting out the Ancients, giving them the vision they needed, leading to a number of kills to go Liquid's way, and suddenly Secret. Very much on the back foot here in the early game. It's really interesting because I would have thought that maybe Secret would have been onto them. They see the Tusk just camping outside the rush pit like, oh, they must have seen us, so they've got that ward. But obviously that's not what they thought. Secret probably thought, okay, he's just waiting there. Because if they had expected the ward, that never would have happened. As a result, it's Team Secret who... We talked about how Liquid... Liquid don't have to get as much done in the early game, it's Secret, and when Secret get fall behind like this, I feel that puts even more pressure onto them. Yeah, The comeback potential is. of, like, the Lone Druid Sven, there just won't be enough farm and room on the map for them if Liquid can get aggressive. I feel like these are two heroes who, not necessarily that they need to have a great start or anything, but you just don't want both of these heroes to be in farm mode. You want one of them to try and be creating space for the other. Definitely, and, and I mean, we can come back to the Marana, which, like, it's mo the early game is supposed to be, like, you hit some arrows, you make some space. She's gonna have ulti soon, so maybe Puppy's ulti can set something up. But the Marana, as the game becomes more and more, like, 5v5, is a lot less useful. And w you're going up against, like, a tired Ravage, then even the fact that you have a Dox is not really gonna help you come back into the game by winning a team fight. Uh, yeah, honestly, I think Liquid are... In a, in a really strong position right now, and... Yeah. I mean, Puppy's, like, ratio of arrow shot at creeps to arrow shot at heroes is currently not looking too good. I think I've... There's been, what, the one arrow bottom lane which he shot at a hero? Yeah. Maybe, like, one other. He's... He's found a lot more creeps with arrows than he has tried to hit heroes. Not that you're gonna always be landing them, but... At some point, you've gotta have a, like, clear purpose for this Marana pick. Well, there's the Marana ulti that should save okay. Pile I Die, but... Counter kill on this one. Sven gonna go in, throws the sun, does not have the god string for now. The arrow will get dodged by the Yule Scepter. Oh no, Fata may still get out of this one, but here comes the god string. There's gonna be a false promise as well. Fata can just turn and fight. Has he got the heals to survive this one? It looks like, yes, he's healing. Here comes Tide Ravage on everyone. Secret. They lose one, they're gonna lose two. Weeha goes down as well. Puppy looking for the TP out. He'll survive, but they lose. Well, the more important here is all three cores go down, just the two supports dying. Pilot Eye saying, I'm sorry guys, I failed you, I didn't swap save anyone. That, not... <laughs> that was actually so well played by Liquid, especially Matumba Man, I want to say, who, who like jumps in and waits and waits and waits and then he chains. Like, the t the timing of everything was so perfect yeah. to like, buy time for Oracle to get there, to save DP, then Tide gets there, casts the Ravage. 
Yeah, Liquid are just completely outplaying Secret right now. I mean, some of the things like the defensive, you're barely dodging the arrow. It's just like a very small, like, the, uh, you, that's like a timing thing, which was almost like somewhat luck. But yeah, yeah, even so, it's like time and time again, Liquid just making so much out of this. This is really cool. Ty can farm Ancients and this neutral camp. He's like actually made a pathway through. I have not seen this one before. I'm not sure if other players have, have been doing this on the Radiant Tidehunter, but a little pathway that goes through these two camps. Extra value out of the, the Iron Talon. Yeah. <laughs> Iron Talon Tide, definitely a, a thing, I guess. He's now farmed up a mech, it looks like, for the old Tidehunter. I mean, uh, look, I, I guess no matter how where the game goes, there's always going to be a chance that Sven's going to use God's Strength, plus like damage from Vengeora. Dark is going to vacuum everyone, and then you, we've seen those clips of like one shot clear yeah. bolt. But for me, it's becoming more and more like that's the game plan because Moran is losing a purpose. Even the Lone Druid is, to me, like he's got a Midas. He's like sitting around farming, not really any game impact right now. And even if he goes, the Radiance would come up at such a late time, it doesn't feel like it's going to have a big game impact. And if anything, like the Bear will just be an easy unit for the Death Prophet to Spirit Siphon in these fights. So, smoke coming out from Secret. Is this a Roche attempt or something else? It looks like they're headed in there. They've got God Strength and Envy. Gonna pop it in Starfight. He throws the Wave of Terror, oh, which actually goes over the Observer yeah. Ward. Yeah. They could have spotted that Wave of Terror, and I think it looks like here they come. Tidehunter, no Ravage. Has got Mech here. They're gonna pop the Invis. Tide actually walks past. They don't know, it what? seems. Well, they, they might have not been looking at the ward. Oh, yeah, yeah, no. Absolutely. You have to have your camera over the ward when they throw that Wave of Terror, but it was just. Amazing that Tide walked past and Secret remained cool. Oh, Side of Fist scouts it out. Radiant, oh, Radiant gets nothing. They don't they got a tower. Yeah, they got yeah. a tower and they're just a little bit too late with that Slide of Fist scout. That's. I want to say it's still like. It's the oversight by Pilot R when they're rushing. You, you're supposed to wave like in the other direction so that if the ward's there, it doesn't spot them. Yeah. And if they were looking at that ward, that was literally the same ward that gave Liquid a huge fight at the Ancients' poor, so... Yeah, I mean... Perhaps, because definitely Liquid, even without Ravage, I feel Ty can just walk in there, throw an Anchor Smash, he's got mech. I think Liquid crushed that fight, if they, if they find them in there. And they had four heroes, at least nearby, pushing bottom lane. Yeah, I mean, they, they got Morana on the way out, Secret weren't ready to fight despite the fact they got Aegis, so... I, I think that says quite a lot yeah. about the situation there. Secret get away with it, a little bit lucky. But then, then again, Liquid have gotten a little bit lucky here and there as well, so I mean... Fair is fair. <laughs> but they're just chasing that wagon. Cardi, come back here, Cardi! Oh, it looks like he dropped the Dominator, so... Creep for you. Oh, he dominated a new creep, actually, in the mid lane, so he'll send over a range creep to start stacking those Ancients, but... Bottom lane where Liquid say, you've been ages? Well, we don't really care, we're gonna try and push and fight into you until these TPs come in. Ben's TP has got the God Strength, Mind Control on the front lines, can throw a Ravage here if he'd like to, he gets hit by an arrow, is he gonna be the target? Yes, he is for now, pops the mech, holding onto the Ravage, he'll throw it now, catches out two, make it three with that one, and Sven just getting kind of kited in place, no longer has God Strength, he will be coming back up in just a second here. Death Prophet's already killed one, that's in the top lane, Matumba Man, Fire Remnant out, the bear getting low, gets picked up by the Anchor Smash, Mind Control, the new target, but got a bear for this one. I don't think Liquid are going to be too phased by that as the Searing Chain's out on Puppy, Matumba Man. Needs to decide if he wants to fight this one or not. Jarek's still in the fray. Pulling it out, has an Ice Shard as well as a Walrus Punch soon, and with that bench, bench Magic Missile, he will go down off to the side. It's Kuro, unable to keep all his teammates alive. He's on the back foot here. This arrow will land, gets one more nuke off onto Weeha. He's going down to the urn charges. He'll die. Oh, Kuro, what a way to go out. With a bang, he gets the kill, and oh, meanwhile, Fata says, not only did I get a kill up here, you're also missing me get your tier 2 tower. Still a big win for, for Secret, I want to say. It's the best they could have gotten in the yeah. position there. He solo killed the Darkseer, which I guess using the Yules to cancel off the Surge, I imagine, and... For yeah. Liquid, that overall seems like fight they, they, they're super happy about, because they fight 4v... I guess 4v4 into an Aegis, Trade pretty evenly, kill off the Spirit Bear, and meanwhile Fata getting a tier 2 tower and a kill. Yeah, because of the trade top, I'd be happy with it, but I I don't know. I, I feel like the fight's at the bottom lane on its own. Could have been sufficiently far ahead to not get that many deaths. Yeah. I think it was quite messy. Like, Tide had to use mech just to heal himself at the start, because he kind of got initiated on, and they didn't get to combo the mech with the, the False Promise, which is also obviously very useful. But, yeah, the way it works out, Liquid are still fine, they're still very much in control of this game, and now they're stealing Ancient stuff. Yeah, they, they... I think the ward just expired, but they saw the Sven try and start oh, off on it. Envy 
He's fighting with Timberman. And he knows he can't go for the TP until the Searing Chains is being used. Now the Searing Chains gets used. It may be too late. Uh, one more. Okay, he barely gets out of there. The Tumber Man just a tiny bit too early on the chains. He tried to wait as long as possible before he went for it, and Envy gets the TP out. Perhaps something that could have been stopped. So, so what's the reason you think that he uses the chains and doesn't just wait? Is it, is it like, you know, forcing a decision or something? Like, you either have to TP now or... I think he thought he was prob probably running out of time since he's near a T2 tower. Maybe he's afraid of like a rotation coming in or... I don't know, it's yeah. hard to say exactly. And very much, he, he kind of calculated in his head and thought the damage was there to get the kill. But the war cry with the bonus armor was what kind of meant his right clicks did yeah. nowhere near enough. And it's easy for us to say in hindsight, like, oh, it yeah, was really yeah. close, he should have waited a bit. Yeah. You don't, like, so he probably just, he just didn't calculate for the war cry. That's what it came down to. Yep. That makes sense to me. So what are the, okay, Battle 3 comes out of my Timberman, and the game continues to go Liquid's way very, very clearly. They've already got the Octarine Core up on Death Prophet, so now the uptime for this exorcism proves and improves. And they've taken every single out of tower, and we're pre-20 minutes into this game, so I don't imagine next Roshan will probably be going Liquid's way. They'll start hitting these item timings that can prepare them for a high ground siege, and Secret uh, in a bit of a tough spot here. Yeah, I mean, it's it's even worse than the kind of gold... Well, mm -hmm. there's... Oh, he didn't get the Searing Chains. He missed the combo, a rare miss from the They find Palada, they find Palada. Uh, not going to go for a TP himself. He is invis here. I'm not sure they have that sentry. much protection. Only well, there's the sentries in the stash of the dust. He was holding Highlight a sentry. Die. And a juke TP now. Oh, wow, he gets out. All right. So yeah, what I wanted to say before is that things look really bad for Secret, and they're actually worse than they look because of like the way the drafts are. Secret, we, we said the other team that wanted to actually have. Yeah. You know, the early momentum, put the early pressure on the enemy team. And we've spoken about how the support Morona has a lot less value at this point in the game. The Lone Druid has a lot less value than it's meant to have. Even the Sven is like, because it's not a head on farm, it wants to like have S and Y, BKB, various things. So, Secret need some kind of miracle fights and Liquid sense that and they just go for the high ground. Yeah. Well, they've got a Guardian Greaves tied on the front line, so really engaging into this is incredibly difficult. Mind control taking perhaps a damage to any bargain for here and without an Aegis or anything on their side. They're just trying to get maximum value out of this excellent cooldown. And they swap back in onto Fata. He pulled even further away. Can the false promise come off? It does do so in time. Fata now getting healed back up. They've got to do some more damage if they want to kill him off. He self heals as the heal's still continuing. I don't think Fata's going, yeah, no way. He's full HP. That's Oracle for you. And Fata now on the back foot. Or is he more heals coming his way? And there's nothing Secret can do. They've already used two buybacks here. It's just the clean from the Ember Spirit takes out two more. And that's four dead. Rax is exposed. They've bought enough time for the exorcism to wear off, but like you said, is this just game? It is. GG, Secret. I mean, 21 can, minutes. Secret went for like a really cheeky little play. I don't know if you saw it. It was the swap into arrow. So Swapped arrow and like yeah. even vacuumed him further back. They tried to get him out of range for the false promise, it looked like, so that yeah, so someone could basically stop the false promise. But I feel like better yet, they need someone to actually go in the Oracle while they swapped yeah, it back. Yeah, it's, it's kind of telling on the situation. Secret were like, we need to do this like ingenious, super creative attempt.